welcome. We are back. I am Raven. This is Blood Honey with our review of Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, continuing on the Honey Tour review series, where right now we're currently going down the Friday the 13th franchise. Now, this is the ninth entry. It came out in 1993, four years after Jason Takes Manhattan. Now, this is, of course, when it's under the rights of New Line Cinema, also known as the house that Freddy built. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so this is the first time where the two big franchises are under the same roof, which, of course, explains the ending, teasing possible future crossovers, which took some time to get there, but eventually it did. Uh, so, yeah, this is by far the most controversial of the of the franchise having been just so drastically different um the director behind this one adam marcus he's basically a, a film student right out of school um yeah sean cunningham who i who i think was the one who touted for him to be the director because they had brought him back on board and so he just kind of wanted to do his own thing and just we got what we got um it's a very very bizarre film now it's at the point where you either love this film or you hate it there's not really much in between with this one so yeah at first you would think fans are like what the hell am i watching right now but of course over time like a season of the witch it kind of gains its own cult following and like i said you either love it or you don't so let's just jump right in you walking away from it of course getting your reaction for the first time how do you feel about it? Um, <laughs> it was very, I, I don't know. Fair De enough. Definitely like you were saying, Season of the Witch, I, I guess I can see that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, just... I, I can't. Yeah, I, I don't. Bl I don't <laughs> you blame were you. Not lying. When I you said. I don't blame oh, you. Oh, it's special. Oh, oh, yeah. It's definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's a special film. That's for sure. Even more so than a season of the witch. Where, yeah, you don't. Michael has nothing to do with that film whatsoever. Jason mm -hmm. does have something to do with this film, although he's not really there. He's there, but he's not there. Um, yeah, I I got some some. Uh, Halloween vibes from it like what they were trying to do and the whole having a sister thing so yeah again it's one of those it's one of those points in a franchise especially by this point it, it's where they try to add in all this extra backstory that may or may not be necessary just to kind of ramp up the stakes and to try to something different and to say that he has a sibling, a sister, after all this time, um, it's it's very odd. It doesn't really have much placement. And it's, again, where we've talked about the inconsistencies throughout the franchise as far as continuity and timeline. But this one just throws out the window that much further. And Whoa. just, yep. y yeah, right there's the where there's next to nothing left. You, you really, it really is such a, a great departure um, from what all the previous films have been and the, and like I said it either works for you or it doesn't because so, starting off with the film we have this woman who's driving away to Camp Crystal Lake okay she shows up there she goes through usual routine she kind of sets up she takes a shower blah 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 Jason shows up starts chasing her and then you come to find out she's basically like a FBI agent or you know whatever and then they set up this giant attack to destroy Jason and Quite literally, the film starts off with a bang. So that's a great sequence in and of that itself. That was interesting, yeah. Although you have to question as to basically, like, Jason himself is like this country countrywide, like, well-known entity, basically, at this point, is what they lead you to believe. And so to where the SWAT, like, like the government is getting involved to take him out. And it's, it is quite funny. It's like they knew... It's, it's a bit of self-awareness where it's just like, oh, you you go out there, you get naked, lure him out so we can kill him. 
Yeah, I was I, wondering about her it's so, acrobatics and a towel. So. Yeah, it's like going undercover in such a unique and special Ooh. way. Like, yeah, go yeah. out there, you know, a little TNA, and then boom, we got our guy. So that's Let's get definitely out. something to put a little gold star next to on your record. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's quite a unique situation. Mm. In 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 this sequence, you actually do get Jason like grunting and making sounds and stuff, which is kind of the first time it's happened. And you know, people people have pointed out it's like, but Jason doesn't really make noise. And also later well, on, well, the, the, maybe a little bit of breathing, but yeah, as for you know, as far as vocalization, yeah, which go. also brings up later questions in this when he's body jumping and whatnot as to how and why he's like speaking amongst doing other things which like i said we'll get to that and so you go from that you got the coroner there which and that's where we get the appearance from kane hotter um out of makeup which is fun <laughs> that was that i actually did enjoy him mm-hmm. you know kind of make poking fun at the whole situation and then yeah kind of killing himself mm-hmm. so yeah 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 yeah, 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 as, yeah especially in, as time goes on that becomes more of like a common thing you know like a nice little sight gag and stuff uh-huh. like that so to have that there you know uh, that was fun and then you have the coroner as he's going through and everything he basically gets in entr- like entranced by the heart to where it possesses him to want to eat it and then get himself possessed by jason how did you feel like first off getting that moment there and like what? Like where did you think it was going with it? Uh, by that point? Well, I mean, with with the whole beating thing, I'm like, uh, because I know it stopped <clears throat> and then started again. Mm-hmm. You know, at when he was like looking at it. Yeah. And I was, I guess later on in the movie, it kind of made more sense as to why, but, mm-hmm. um. It was really weird. And then he goes and, like, starts manjing on it. I was like, what the frick? Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's one of those things to where you see it. Was it was just a really, really weird sequence yeah. in its entirety. Yeah, the film itself is very grossed out. It has, like, a lot of body horror oh, aspects to it. Later in the film. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, but yeah, but with this sequence though, with the heart beating, as gross as it is on screen, on screen, knowing that it's a heart. Not only that, but knowing it's like Jason's old ass rotted heart, and just you don't know. Well, what, that does. That's like, not I what know, bothered me. It was the dude. Yeah, but for me, for it. me though, yeah, but it's the idea of that though, and even as an actor in a scene like that, like whatever they put in that, they put it at a the word safe, of course. Well, yeah, but obviously. you guys think, but even for me, I just been like bite down whatever gross because they always do weird stuff like they'll have yeah. like make stuff out of soup or whatever and just dies and yeah you to, when, you ever, when you ever have to sort. film a sequence like that just in your head it's just gotta be like it's gotta be bizarre but um i know it yeah. was just I, I i i don't know the whole thing was i think it was more so the guy eating it and mm-hmm. it was jason mm-hmm. and i'm like well what's going on here why and then yeah things started happening so yeah and so jason goes on his killing spree though not in his body so yeah so um like i said it's cool to get the appearance from kane harder there but you but that's when you start to realize is that kane obviously is very much underutilized by comparison to what he's done before in the beginning of the film and he's at the end of the film, with the exception of a few shots here and there where you get his reflection and you can see that's Jason basically like a reverse vampire sort of deal <laughs> where you can actually see the true Jason underneath. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, he goes on a killing spree and then that's when we start to roll out more of the introductions for the other characters. And we get Creighton Duke, the interview um, with him. And he's basically at this point kind of like uh, the Loomis, like a late coming Loomis of the series in, in a way, kind of like Atari Jarvis, okay. but he's, I, I, I but, suppose. yeah, but he's kind of where he, they allude to like a backstory where, um, in theory, I think it's basically uh, like an old girlfriend of his was killed by Jason. So I think, um, fans have probably connected to where, oh, where an earlier girl probably could have been his girlfriend that was killed at some point by Jason and so that's how he kind of has a backstory with them or something. Well, Either yeah. that was off camera. I can't remember for sure. But so, how do you feel about the Creighton Duke character when he was introduced? Um, did you did he strike you as an interesting figure or? 
I I suppose so. I was trying to puzzle him out, mm-hmm. especially the one sequence in the jail cell. I'm like, what's going on here? That's kind of it's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird little character yeah. thing there where he just he looks to want to break his bounty hunter fingers, dude, yeah. but but it kind of it it. it is as, as, as odd as it might be, it kind of establishes him as like this kind of like dominant, just kind of um, just edgy, cool type of guy that's just like, you don't give a shit, but he's just going to do what he's going to do. And, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but the Creighton Duke character himself, um, it's one of those characters that once you see him, that kind of helps carry the film. And you wish a character like this actually would have been in earlier films or you would see um, in later sequels, because I do think he's a very cool and charismatic character um, to, like, again, to really help um, add a new establishing threat for Jason, like I said, like a Tommy Jarvis that could be, you know, a reoccurring character. Mm-hmm. So he's definitely a standout for all the weirdness and all the whatever you think of this film, he is a good aspect to it. Um, and so, again, we, we're going through getting to know more of these characters we get to know more of the uh the the Voorhees uh bloodline with these characters you get the mom that's killed early on where you think she might be the main character but then she gets killed um and then it's like no she's not the main character and then that's when we also later on get introduced to the daughter and what she has a kid and then again, all this ties to the Jason Voorhees bloodline. It's a very odd and confusing aspect to it. How did you feel about that? Did you feel attached to them at all? Because one half, you like say, so you have her, and then the second half, you get the the daughter, and so you don't really get much time to get to know them that much. How did you feel about those two overall? Um, well, I sussed out the whole family sort of thing mm-hmm. almost right away. I'm like, they're not going with that. Uh, yeah, they are. And then, um, it, like I said, it definitely had Halloween vibes. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember which one it was where they started off at the mental institution. And she has the baby. That Halloween one. That's what that made me think of. Oh, yeah, Halloween 6? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm... Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. That's what mm. that made me think of, for sure. I was trying to remember when that was made and if they drew parallel. Uh, I'm not, uh, let's it. see, wait. Halloween so, 6, that was 95, so that was after the fact. Okay. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Okay, so... It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Yeah, again, again, it's just, like I said before, it's just one of those things where they try to tie in too much backstory yeah. and all those other things that you know clearly were not there prior, but they just want to go ahead and just it give you all this weird. extra stuff. I suppose it would have been possible because I was trying to go back in my head and mm-hmm. figure out a timeline of like, Again, with okay. this franchise, there is no... Tr- I know, I, I know, but... <laughs> timeline. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, with... Jason's mother having had another child and I don't remember if the father was in the picture but I'm like okay how does this one fit in okay I guess they do well as far as the lore as far as Jason's father he was never really in the picture and there was times I can't remember which films exactly but um there were times where they were looking them like right in a father character who kind of comes in who's like an abandonment father but looks to like resurrect Jason or something like that so so as far as like the general continuity, the father was never really in the no, picture. No, no, I I didn't figure, but yeah. I, that was just me trying to mm-hmm. piece it in there and, and yeah. make it work. It was it was just really weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we also get the Stephen character, who's who's the main male protagonist. I would say he's um he actually plays better than the other two female of course not the knock the female characters but i mean as far as like because we've always had the main female protagonist and if we always had tommy jarvis of course um he's actually not that bad i actually do feel like he actually carries more weight to the film because again you don't really get much establishment and much and much attachment to the other two uh females the mom and the daughter that much and so he's the one that kind of helped carry the film along with the presence of creighton duke along the way um, because he's the one, like I said, being more, you know, in the chase against Jason and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as, like, the kills, you get some pretty gnarly kills in this one. I would say up until this point, it's probably, honestly, overall, 
the better kills probably in the franchise, at least the most well done. Uh, budget was actually very generous as, as far as that's concerned. Um, how did you feel about it? Do you feel it was up to par? Yeah, there mm -hmm. were definitely some gnarly kills. Yeah. Um, head squishing. Uh, yeah, a lot of that, like a lot of head slamming and, in this stuff, and a lot of. Well. <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's his mo really, um, mm -hmm. and and yeah, yeah, definitely definitely some interesting stuff going on there. Yeah, and I would say uh, of all of them up till this point is also kind of more action driven. Like it also kind of had gives more of a sense of action a lot too because there's a lot more active characters and with the cops and everything, there's a lot of shooting. And then Jason goes up, you know slams a couple of people around and it's just kind of going so for the most part the film i would say is well paced um as far as that goes so it's a little bit more action horror stuff going on um yeah and again just you you'll get to aspects that when it comes to the body jumping is that you'll realize is that he has to jump from by the body right and it only has basically limited amount of time before a body itself starts not being able to really handle yeah. him yeah, that's, and so, that's what and, Duke was saying something about it. Yeah, and again, aspects that you know that clearly were not there before, and you because it's always been the same body clearly because like he's he, he's talking he because Creighton Duke he's talking about oh yeah you know Jason he's just you know just anybody you know body is just you know just a sack of meat to him you know he doesn't need it he could just go over and buy the body, and though we've clearly have seen time and time again throughout this franchise where. Uh, you know, even with all the consistencies, it's been Jason's body the whole time. It's been through all of this hell mm -hmm. repeatedly. We haven't seen him do this shit once, and yet now all of a sudden this is a thing. But uh, yeah, but he he he'll he'll take someone and he'll basically give them the most the the most jacked up mouth to mouth you'll ever see in your life, and that brings us to the one portion where he has the dude tied to the table and he's shaving him. And this is one of the points that where people will bring up. It's like, what the hell is going on here? Now, I get what Adam Marcus was doing in the sense it's like, oh, yeah, clearly it's this more like extra, you know, crazy spiritual body jumping thing. And it's like I can see him, him trying to do a ritualistic type of thing there. But as far as the general setup and knowing Jason and all of this, it doesn't work, and it just comes across as so effing weird that yeah. you don't know how to place it. How Jason is in no way, shape, or form gentle, and for him to take a straight razor and to be able to shave someone's face without a single scratch is beyond me. That makes no sense at all. Yeah. And it's when you see it, you're just like... It definitely didn't work for me. I was like, <laughs> this is very un-Jason. I know. I'm like... Like, I can get what you're doing with this film, but that was just the one thing. You did not need that. You didn't need to do that at it all. You could have just so done weird. done it the same way you've been doing it through the, through the entire film. And yet, for some reason, you just felt the need to do that. I don't know. Like, reasons, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So moving forward, you know, he's jumping from by the body. And eventually, like I said, he does kill the mom. And then so, yeah, so now he's after the chase, again, to kind of finish the bloodline like a Michael Myers type of thing. And so, therefore, he's going after the daughter now. And then Steven is playing hero. And, uh, and you'll and again, you'll get these uh, pretty decent sequences where he's holding his own, you know. He's kind of a dorky type of dude, but he's holding his own against Jason. And so, again, all throughout, you're just getting everyone slaughtered left and right. And then so when you get towards the climax of the film in which yeah finally jason returns but the whole body slug that eventually rises out of one body which is kind of funny <laughs> all things considered because um the mom's body is at the bottom of the house in the basement and then so Due to a he series can, of events that yeah, earlier. a series, yeah, and then he can only be reborn through another Voorhees. And so what he decides to do as this little <laughs> slug, 
is that he 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 finds his way up her up her uniform and you just know what? slides yeah. on in and just boom and he's right back to exactly how he was from the start of the film which is of course very odd as to how that again consistency that lies. whole sequence <laughs> I, I i was watching that little thing yeah it's like i guess make its way around you know just run around like crazy and then it like mm-hmm. ends up downstairs i don't don't remember and i'm like oh no they're not oh sweet jesus yeah oh that yeah. was just I, that was definitely way more <laughs> you could you just cut to the, the one shot the thing. one above shot you see the little tail wiggle and just <laughs> <laughs> it was so was hilarious not, dude it's so it's so hilarious right. yeah, it's, yeah and then Jason pops up. Yeah. It, which I guess I, it's a supernatural thing. And again, him returning to his original form, though. But why does he have his clothes exactly as they were in the beginning? And even the mask, for that matter, I don't know. Again, just one of those little things. It's just odd. I know you don't, you don't really question these things, but you just... Every now and again, you just have to think, just... Uh, is it normal? I don't know. Whatever. Well, I mean, <laughs> versus being reborn as the the child monster you know i mean yeah that too but i mean then I, that wouldn't really work because King i mean Carter, i wouldn't be surprised so. considering all we've seen he wasn't just born naked and he was just like having his machete just swinging all over the place <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> and just <laughs> i guess he, he winds up uh bear hugging great and duke to death which is kind of unfortunate he actually would have liked to have seen him seen him carry through to the end but that is what it is um yeah, and so um, he did introduce the fact that you do have to take this dagger, and again, the, the only the Voorhees can kill him, and so uh, he, uh, Stephen and Jason tussle outside for a bit, and then uh, Jennifer eventually gets the one up on Jason, and right through the heart, stabs him, and then Jason is getting his ass drugged to hell now. Yeah, and, that was a whole other level of weirdness there. Yeah, yeah, you got your, the little dirt hands kind of coming up and pulling them down, which is interesting. I mean, it's an interesting little... I suppose. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, with what I mean, with what they've given you and what they expect you to buy into, it's, it's just like... Course, yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much so. So, yeah, I mean, Jason gets drugged to hell, and uh, that's that was the final Friday. Because you thought that was weird. I mean, yeah, the, the series definitely jumps the gun even further after that. And then, of course, you get the special appearance from Kruger's hand, or Kane Hodder's hand, because it was Kane Hodder's hand who was who wore the glove and pulls the mask down. Fun fact. Well, yeah, but I mean that that was Freddy's claws. Yep. Fun it, fun fact: I, one of my relatives used to have one of those. Yeah. I think it was my uncle. Yeah, I have one. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, final general thoughts of final friday um as they were walking away i was like where's the baby <laughs> did they walk away without the baby I, he, I think he was holding him in his left arm I, I like, would, he, like i'd like see. to think so but it's funny because i was actually literally thinking that too like it kind of looks like he's not holding the baby but he is and he has his arm wrapped around her you could barely tell but yeah he's holding the baby <laughs> yeah it's funny just like yeah screw that baby it's like I don't, we, don't, we don't need this anymore <laughs> no we don't need it absolutely oh, not man. no no chances whatever <laughs> no it, the, this was a really really special movie yeah. i don't know about mm-hmm. yeah. wanting to watch it multiple times yeah unless it's a necessity so yeah for me i mean because i haven't really seen it all the way through i've probably only seen it all the way through maybe once twice perhaps but all i know is i can recall at least one good time where I've actually watched this movie from start to finish. Uh, the first time having been like years ago with the you know the kid I used to hang out with and stuff. And watching it this time, again, all things considered, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's just such a bizarre concept film that it's just its own thing. Again, when it first comes out, you're looking at it, you're like, what the hell am I watching here? This is not what you sign up for. But enough time goes on, you look at it as its own thing, and it's like, you know what? It's not terrible. Uh, the gore 
the, the kills and all of that stuff, the suspense, the, the concept, it's there, it works. But when you attach it to something like a Friday the 13th that's been so established that you've had so many sequels to that you know the rules and you know the general concept, it just asks and raises too many questions as to how in the world this actually fits in to the whole thing. Because canon-wise, it just doesn't make any sense at all. You really do just have to remove it from that and look at it as some separate thing that just happens to be attached to Friday the 13th. That's how I look at it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, honestly, otherwise it's like trying to jam a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Or in this case, a demon slug into a... Oh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. That just... Reverse oh. birth. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Uh, how does... J I mean, I don't, I don't want to know how Jason comes popping up. I imagine it's some sort of like... I think it was just basically the body. It just... It just reforms and just burst. like it's like earlier, she's like just like a shell, and she's just yeah, like in early, the basement. Yeah, like earlier, like just... like once he transfers body, the old body melts, or like... and that makes for a gruesome effect too. It's yeah, just... that was really. It's like... things like that where you see in horror films like this that it's like of all the ways to go, I don't want my body mutilated and like just in some jacked up like acid. That's melt. a that's... that that's just so it's a twisted thing to think about that your body is just so like just in such a position that be like i don't not ever want to see that like please just just jam a, like a rod through my chest and then rip me apart and said like yeah, the that, girl. Was like, cool. that was a good kill like just do that to me instead i don't need that yeah the whole melting thing i mean i always thought the indiana jones face melting thing was like crazy mm. but that mm. melting that we watched that was definitely unpleasant oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. wasn't i wasn't like scared or whatever but i'm like Whoa. Yeah, that body horror will do it. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, this movie again, don't love it, don't hate it. It's it's harder to go back and rewatch this one as much as the other ones. I would have to be in a certain kind of mood to really sit and watch this one from start to finish, or if you're just doing a full on marathon, maybe. But yeah, it's just again, I'm in, I'm kind of in the middle with it. Like I said, as its own thing. I'll take it for what it is. As a Friday the 13th film, hell no. It does not work in the slightest. And you just also, also you just don't get Jason. You don't get Kane doing his thing, really. Mm -hmm. And it's just... So the the look of Jason, though, what do you think about that? Did you think it was... You know? It was... It was definitely a messed up looking Jason. That's for yeah, sure. yeah. And he's yeah. been through a, quite a bit. Yeah, the mask of this one, they basically have it to where his flesh is kind of grown around the mask, which is kind of an odd choice, but it's a unique looking Jason. I'll give him that. Um, yeah, it, I'm, you know, so-so on it, like I said, but I don't know. Yeah, so in all in all, I'd give the film probably like a 2.5. Like, it's right there in the middle. Like I said, it's not good or terrible film. Again, as its own entity. If this was its own concept, not attached to this, I would say it would have more merit. Same thing with Season of the Witch. If it was separated from that, then it would have done far better, I would say. But you attach it to something, again, that just doesn't, you know, it doesn't really gel, then, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a screwy film. So. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so that'll do it for our review of Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday, quote-unquote. Uh, next up will be Jason X, uh, also known as Jason taking his ass into space. So he goes from Manhattan to hell to space. Boy, this he has a hell of a yeah. travel agent. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> as Jason, Jason gets around, uh, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, in more ways than one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, we hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you would. We would appreciate that. Uh, and we will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.